we're on easy street and it feels so sweet because the world is but a treat when you're on easy street welcome to the easy street radio show hosted by rob scribner grab a cup of coffee and let's get started this video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Hello and welcome to Easy Street. Today I'm going to talk about a pet peeve. <laughs> That's right. But before we get started, I want to remind you that you can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio, on Spreaker, and lots of other pl um, platforms. And uh, if you go down to our description, you can find out where you can find us and do Take the time to visit Good Talk Radio at goodtalkradio.com. So today, my beef, my rant, <clears throat> is about YouTube. <laughs> and isn't it for everybody? But really, what I started thinking about is, well, first of all, it's a battle to get our, our... If you have a talk show and you happen to use any kind of terminology that because of all the restrictions they're putting on our freedoms and, and freedom of speech and uh, analytics and and um, algorithms that they're using, it is getting virtually impossible to get your videos uploaded and monetized uh, without some kind of issue with it. And so uh, it's always, always a battle now. And so what I'm really starting to notice is being that I was, I've been with YouTube for since 2007 and uh, I thought it was so cool how we could upload a video of just things that we're doing and all that stuff and throw them up and eventually uh, uh, very quickly in the old days you get monetized and uh, uh, it was just fun and people enjoyed the variety of video videos and that's where I kind of get my beef is why can't you let us YouTube be accountable for our own actions let us be accountable for what we watch if we don't like it we turn the station and if the advertisers and, and let me talk about advertisers I advertise on uh, on Amazon uh, on uh, YouTube through uh, AdWords and I can pick what subjects I want my ads to run so don't tell me that the advertisers are upset whether their their uh, commercials play on a alternative news platform or a cooking platform um, advertisers have control over their ads through the interface but what I'm seeing is YouTube is is uh, starting to answer to the big companies the the people with the monies and yes I understand it's all about business and stuff however you're letting advertisers dictate what shows are good or bad and that should be us we the people should be accountable for ourselves in the old days when you didn't like something on TV you turn the station <laughs> just click done if there's something you don't like you click you don't get even you don't go to the advertisers you don't try to shut down the other platform you just turn the station it's just that easy so YouTube to me is like turning into primetime television I mean if I want to watch primetime television I'll go to primetime television <laughs> But YouTube is only supporting where the bucks are coming in. And uh, it's, it's once again, everything's getting corrupt by money and greed. And so what is your purpose anymore, YouTube? Where is the independence? Where is the, the independent creator? Anytime you don't like some little word they use or something that they're reporting on, you push them down and keep them from getting uh, uh, recommendations and, and things like that and it's just sad to see the change because YouTube you were created by a concept of bringing everybody in as creators 
and now you're punishing them. Is this really the path you want to go? Is your vision to be like a, a primetime television show? Do you know how many great videos are out there made by independent people? Why can't you just leave it alone? That's all we ask. Leave it alone. Let us be creators. Let the viewers be accountable for their own actions. Don't try to police us. You're taking, it's, it's a step of taking our freedom away. It's a freedom of speech, a freedom of advertising. Even as an advertiser, I don't want you deciding where I want my videos to play. If it plays on a platform that is kind of controversial, but it's still a lot of people on it, I want my ads there. So anyway, it's food for thought. I think what we're going to see someday, a new platform is going to come along and get the idea that it can't be censored. And I think it's going to happen. And I think YouTube, you should be aware of that. You can't stay on top of the, 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 the mountain all the time. Someone's going to knock you down. It's just a matter of time. So YouTube, please think about what you're doing. YouTube, please consider not censoring so much. And, I, and maybe start putting statements out there of if there's something you don't like in here, be accountable for yourself and turn the station. What do you think? Hello guys, this is Ranger Rob, and today I'm sharing a secret. So many people have asked us, Rob, the Ranger Rob poopy bags are awesome. How did you get them so big and deep and lemon scented? Well, the secret to the lemon is because we're from Arizona. And uh, of course you guys know we have a lot of citrus here. So I'm going to share the secret. Are you ready? It's kind of warm today. <laughs> Are you ready for the secret? Where do Ranger Rob poopy bags come from? All right, here, here we go. You ready? They come from Arizona in the Arizona sunshine. And how they get their lemon scent is because we grow citrus here. So with a little bit of grafting and a little bit of secret remedies, I'll show you how we make the Ranger Rob poopy bags. Are you ready? Now don't tell anyone. We grow them right here. We grow them right here in Arizona. You can see I've got a whole crop of them coming up. And they're going to be boxed real soon. And you can see that we can grow them. And then we roll them up into rolls. Or we put them in sheets and we send them to you. How do you get them? You go to Amazon and we can, because we grow them ourselves, we can keep the price down. So guys, the next time you're using the Ranger Rob Pet Poopy Bags, realize that they're homegrown, mm -hmm. <laughs> they're lemon scented, they're large, they're deep. They're leak proof. They're from Arizona. <laughs> so guys, have a great day. And now you know the secret. Don't tell everybody, please. Pretty soon everybody will be growing their own poopy bags. We want that. So anyway, guys, Ranger Rob poopy bags. Homegrown in Arizona. So there you go. Ranger Rob poopy bags are grown in your garden. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. It's a secret. Hey, I wanted to take the time to uh, let you know, if you'd like to be on Easy Street, uh, feel free to go to uh, our uh, Facebook page and use our messenger and give us a holler and we'll see if we can get you on. Um, our subjects are really broad on this show and you can uh, uh, pretty much share any kind of thing with us. Uh, sometimes it could be just an opinion or it can be a product or service or a business that you that you own. Uh, we'd love to talk with you. And if it's a, 
uh, looks like a show that would uh, or be something that fit in well, we'd be happy to bring you on board. Uh, if you do, um, you do have to have Skype. And because if we're going to bring you on, we want them to see your pretty face. So yeah, if you want to uh, you want to be on Easy Street, give us a holler. Now moving on to a little bit more serious things. I thought I'd uh, go through an article with you guys. I'm just going to go through the highlights. And the subject is problems faced by future generations and what to do. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of just going to hit what those subjects are. And, and I, I think it's kind of interesting and, and worth discussing. So uh, this article was written by a professor, Spencer Zifkat, uh, Z-I-F-C-A-K. Um, and it's on an article from a research report called Future Justice. And one of the first things that uh, they're saying that our next generation has to deal with is environmental and climate change, which is definitely uh, clear. I think we've all seen <laughs> that the world's gone crazy. The climates uh, between fires, flooding, uh, winds, hurricanes, uh, all kinds of crazy things. Uh, our, uh, our, our next generation's got uh, their hands full. Uh, obviously, it's kind of affecting the current generation. Uh, the next thing that's really big, and I, I really have a pet peeve with this. We've talked about this before. Parenting and discipline. Oh, my gosh. Uh, how hard it is for this generation, a new generation, dealing with kids, especially with, with social media, and the schools are kind of lo lo losing a lot of their principles, their ethics there uh, you know basically we've always had everything kind of a christian based and it's not saying that's that's any better it was kind of what our morale or morality was based off of in the constitution and so uh as we lose those things and those leave uh our schools uh our kids are um uh, living for the now so much not so much thinking about the future uh, learning uh, the golden rule, things like that. Um, and then uh, so much is draining on them and uh, video um, games and things like that. It's like they've captured their attention and we're letting other people influence our kids. And so parenting and discipline is tough. And, uh, you know, we used to joke a lot about when we were younger, uh, how, our, you know, <laughs> If dad was mad at us, you know, uh, we're, we're dead meat. We're going to get a, get the belt and stuff like that. And you know what? It wasn't that bad a thing. So, uh, yeah, it was always, we always knew to respect our parents because they would respond and, uh, never do I ever remember sitting down and having debates with my, <laughs> and, um, I, it's just a, it's a tough, tough subject and, uh, parents have got to be tough and, uh, they can lighten up as they get older, um, or as they become adults. But until then they got to be, give them guidance. They've got to be firm. They've got to teach what no means no. So yeah. What's the next one in here? They got cost of living. <laughs> oh Yeah. Now, with all this climate change, with all these issues going on, especially like over in Africa, they got the locust problem. Um, but uh, with flooding, locust bugs, um, and then issues with health out there, uh, it's going to affect our food chain. And um, the way we're doing some of our food is not um, feasible. Uh, when it comes to raising cattle or beef or, or, and how we strip the lands and then with the weather issues and stuff, uh, we're having problems. And then there's a lot of uh, uh, illnesses out there like swine flu and things like that, bird flu. They're destroying a lot of the animals uh, in different countries, which is uh, causing a, a, a food shortage. And I, I think that's going to be driving our, well, it's going to drive the cost of our food way up. And if it doesn't affect the current generation today, it's certainly going to affect the generations of tomorrow. Um, it's going to get expensive. Might be a good idea to learn how to grow your own stuff, people. Uh, another one here. Health and aging population. Yeah, 
So uh, baby boomers, I'm actually one of the last of the baby boomers, uh, 1960. Um, uh, having programs, I mean, you know, if they, some of the things they're talking about in the future for socialism type of things, where they're going to make Medicare for everybody and things like that, I don't think we can sustain it financially, which I think will end up hurting more of the aging community. Uh, we will, uh, lots of us, we're not saving the money like we wanted to. We don't have companies that do pensions anymore. Uh, this and All it takes is one major hospital stay and you'd be financially wiped out. Everything you saved for all your years if with a 401k could be wiped out. And uh, uh, Social Security is going to be important and Medicare to aging. And I think that should always be the priority because they're going to be on a set budget. And, uh, uh, but the thing is, everybody wants something for free. And for those who uh, uh, are still young and stuff, they want their Medicare, they want free stuff. And uh, it's just not free, people. So uh, health and aging, it, young people don't realize it, but when it come, you know, the time comes, it's going to uh, affect them. Uh, another big uh, issue for future generations is going to be education. Uh, I, I think some of this could be solved a little bit by changing our priorities a little bit. Everybody thinks kids have got to go to college and get a degree, and now it's saturated, and they can't find jobs. And really what it comes down to is we need to change our priorities, and, and I can see it, it could happen where... Uh, blue collar, um, skilled labor, um, so many skills there that we're losing that we need to get back because with other countries having big problems with their economies, uh, we're finding that maybe we need to start doing our own manufacturing again. <clears throat> we're going to need welders. We're going to need plumbers and construction people. We need people that can do uh, uh, machinery work, things like mechan you know, uh, mechanics on and on and uh, we need our parents and we need our schools to push that more teach kids how to build things uh, uh, you don't have to be an engineer that like to build things um, you can be the actual person that builds the things and we also have to make sure that they make good um, good wages and good salaries doing it uh, there was a time where that was the thing to do if you're a good mechanic a good welder, whatever you always had, uh, or a plumber, always had a job and you always made really good income and could provide for your families really well. So education is going to be tough. And I think education needs to change back um, to the basics of life a little bit. Um, skilled labor, teaching, um, instead of just trying to send every, every kid to school and get in debt so bad, uh, vocational schools are, are something that uh, need to be a more emphasis on and uh, yeah our generation that generation coming up they they can't all be four-year degree people drugs and alcohol is another big issue um, it's always been an issue but it seems like it's harder today I think kids and young adults are uh, having a hard time having a, a, a faith in themselves they're getting depressed they're uh, watching too much social media and and, uh, and the parents, of course, are not guiding them well. Um, drugs and alcohol and causes, um, looks good to them. And then as soon as they try it, get addicted to it, it destroys their lives. And it causes a lot of our homeless issues. Let's see what else uh, our poor <laughs> generations ahead of us have got to deal with. Obesity. <laughs> <laughs> you have to wait to be the next generation for that. We already got that problem. Uh, staying fit. Of course, if you're staying at home playing video games every day, not going out hiking and camping and doing things like that, uh, your body ain't going to be happy with that. You're just going to get chunky. And so uh, obesity is going to is a problem now. It's going to be one in the future. Um, I, t I just, I wish... The social media sometimes would just crash and burn and go away because <laughs> it's just destroying us. It's got a lot of good stuff, but 
Yeah, uh, learning to eat better, learning um, as we have starting, when we start having food shortages and things like that, hopefully we can learn how to eat better and more affordably and tend that and, and learning how to eat more plant-based. Uh, that's going to really help our, our bodies a lot. Um, and it should be a little bit easier on the environment. But uh, right now they're even saying when you're doing um, plant-based uh, farming, it's not necessarily that much easier on the climate and the environment. So yeah, tough stuff. <laughs> so that was uh, some of the main issues that our next generations are going to have to deal with. And uh, I, uh, I only pray that they, they, they find solutions to some of this stuff because uh, uh, it's a problem today and it's certainly a problem for tomorrow. Interesting, interesting facts, facts on Easy on Street. Street. The first piece of news here that really should be uh, important to all of us is Spotify has launched a new playlist for dogs left home alone. Yes, that's important stuff, guys. So now when you leave and go to work, you can find a radio station just for your dog. So Spotify has made a playlist and a podcast for dogs to listen to their owners, uh, listen to while their uh, absence of their owners. Um, after finding that nearly 74% of UK pet owners play music for their animals while they're gone. So uh, there you go. For our next story, even Buddhist monks have their issues and stress. So apparently, uh, a cat versus chance friendly feline tests Buddhist monks patience. So apparently when these uh, Buddhist monks go for long uh, prayers, it's called a Thai temple cat bids for affection during five hour long New Year prayers. So uh, I guess that's really testing their faith, I guess, or their spirituality. Um, the, let's see, what's it say? New Year cat was even enough to test the patience of the Buddhist monk as he tried to maintain his chanting concentration. That would be tough. So, <laughs> this is truly being tested. <laughs> Do you think you could sit in prayer or, or in a meditation while you had a cat um, harassing you? Last but not least for interesting facts, the ducks have won. Yes, the French court says they may keep on quacking. I feel sorry for the next generation as a deal with these stories. So uh, basically, the ducks on a small French small holding, which is like a pond, may carry on quacking. A French court has ruled on Tuesday, rejecting the neighbor's complaints that the bird's racket was making their lives miserable. You Don't you think our courts have a little better things to do? Um, <laughs> anyway, so good for the ducks. Yay, they can keep quacking. Okay, before we get to the end of the show, I got to be kind of quick here. Uh, I want to talk about the nine craziest things seized by cus Customs and Border Protection. You won't believe this stuff. <laughs> here we go. Okay, for our first one, guys, we got to go through these kind of quick. Uh, this is an Australian man who was caught with two pigeons hidden in his pants. Number two, Egyptian mummy linen. Uh, I'm not sure where this guy got this stuff, but he was smuggling it. Number three, live tarantulas. A uh, Cuban man. <laughs> was, I don't think I want to be sitting next to this guy. Number four, a man disguised as a car seat. Uh, you don't see that every day. Uh, this was a Mexican gentleman. <laughs> and uh, apparently he didn't make it through uh, customs. Number five, black market baloney. <laughs> so apparently seized more than 150 pounds of baloney from uh, El Paso, Texas. You must really like baloney. Number six, live songbirds. Uh, yeah, a guy named a 56 year old gentleman tried to uh, smuggle endangered songbirds. That is ridiculous. Number seven, a whole pig's head. Why do people do this stuff? Uh, okay, guys, number eight is dead birds for pet food. I, uh, 
Not many things keep me speechless. Apparently, this was a, a passenger traveling from China. Um, decided he wanted to bring dead birds home, I guess, for pet food. And our final number nine is live tropical fish. Um, custom officials stopped a woman um, and she arrived from Melbourne uh, on a flight to Singapore and they found 51 live tropical fish in a plastic bag tucked into her custom made apron tied around her waist. And you, yeah, our next generation does have an issue. <laughs> so there you go, guys. Well, that was an informative and also uninformative show. <laughs> I want to thank you for listening to and watching Easy Street. You can catch us on Good Talk Radio and also on our YouTube channel, on Ranger Rob channel. Uh, I could go on. You know, one thing that's amazing in this world is, is there's no lack of strange stories. But uh, we're not going to do this very often. But today I thought we have a little bit of fun. Uh, the beginning was a little bit more <laughs> serious than normal. Uh, but all you had to do is just do a little bit of homework and realize the world is insane. <laughs> so, guys, please take the time to share and uh, uh, like our videos and uh, subscribe and all that good stuff. We appreciate it. And you get a chance, hop on over to Amazon and pick up some of our Ranger Rob poopy bags. that will help our channel help our environment, help your dog. <laughs> so anyway, guys, have a great day and thanks for being here. Till next time, bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.